Alcohol. Okay. If it's a habit whereby you're drinking at the end of the day because you're stressed out and you drink to relieve your stress, then that's a bad habit. If you're going out and drinking to excess on the weekends and getting drunk and seemingly having a good time, but this is a habit, then that's a bad habit. If you just have like a couple drinks here or there and it's no big deal, then okay, maybe it's not a big deal. But if you really wanna reduce alcohol or you even wanna quit alcohol, then there are a few little tips here that we can, uh, we can incorporate, a few little habits here to really scale back. Now, I quit drinking in 2010. I started off with a 30-day uh, challenge. I just I woke up with a hangover in Austin, Texas at the South by Southwest Festival in 2010, and I was like, man, I just I need to take a break here. And I wasn't a big drinker. I was just like a social drinker. I'd have a few drinks during the week, and whoops, I'm gonna fall over my board here, and um, maybe a few more drinks on the weekend. I got drunk a few times. You know, I was never an alcoholic. But you know, society says that drinking is okay and you know, I created the habit of having a few drinks after work and then you know, maybe drinking a bit more on the weekends with the guys on a Sunday when you're watching football. Uh, maybe you go out on Saturday night when you go out to dinner with friends, you order drinks, you know, like just before you sit down, it's like let's go to the bar and have a couple of drinks to start off with. And man, the, the amount of money that it costs to drink is pretty excessive, like it adds up. Um, and that's just you know going out to a bar or a restaurant. Even if you're at home, you're just buying like a nice cheap bottle of red wine or white wine or a moderate price, price bottle. Even that adds up. And uh, here's the thing, it's not just the cost, the financial cost of buying the alcohol, of purchasing the alcohol. It's also the alcohol related expenses like uh, if you're out and about out at night rather, you're getting a taxi home or an Uber, so you've got to add those costs in. You tend to eat more food when you drink alcohol because the alcohol makes you crave sugary foods. So you tend to eat more and you tend to be more inclined to eat chips and desserts and things like that. Um, plus, you know, if you get sick, like you're hungover or just, you know, a few drinks here or there is making you a bit irritable then maybe you have to go to the, the pharmacy and buy some cold and flu tab tablets because you feel run down. So you're actually spending more money on medication that you ordinarily wouldn't need to spend money on if you weren't drinking. If you get sick or hungover and you miss a day's work and you work by the hour, then you, know, you miss a day's work. Uh, if you run your own business because you're just a little bit icky and irritable the next day from even having one or two drinks, you're not focused on your work and because you're not focused on your work and your business, you're not making as much money. So it's costing you lost revenue because you, you don't have that clarity and that focus. Um, maybe it's a little bit more serious and you drink heavily and you do stupid things. You text the ex or you, you, know, you make drunk calls or you get yourself into trouble. What's that costing you? It's costing your friends, romantic relationships, uh, drinking also costs you your looks, you know, because it is a poison and when you put a poison into your body, um, you know, it dehydrates you. So you, you just look weathered, you know, you get crow's feet here and, and uh, uh, wrinkles are more pronounced. Also, when you're drinking, you tend to carry a little bit of extra weight. Uh, so even if it's like only a few pounds, like if you don't feel confident because you feel like you're carrying an extra five pounds, seven pounds, 10 pounds, then that slows you down, it, makes, it affects your sleep, uh, affects your self-confidence, um, and that has just all these huge spin-off effects. So I'm not here to say quit drinking forever, right? Um, because the occasional drink is fine, it's okay. Uh, I quit drinking and haven't had a drink since 2010 just because I feel amazing. When I quit for 30 days, I lost 13 pounds. Um, my skin got better, people were going, wow, you look so, much better looking, what happened? <laughs> um, and look, I created this program called the 30 Day No Alcohol Challenge. If you wanna find out more about that, just go to 30daynoalcoholchallenge.com and you can see the photo before and after photos of me when I was drinking, I got up to about 218 pounds and when I quit drinking, um, well now I'm down to 185 pounds. So I've lost almost 40 pounds. If you wanna see a kind of marshmallow uh, photo of me, marshmallow face where I'm puffy, in the face, go to 30daynoalcoholchallenge.com and you can see that photo. But let's do a little, 
a few little habits here around alcohol. Um, now I did write down one, two, and three here, but let me just give you a bonus one before we get into this one. Um, if you're wanting to reduce alcohol, remove it from your home. Remove it from your home. Because if it's in sight, then you're more likely to go and, and grab it and pour yourself a drink. But if you remove it from your home altogether, you remove a liquor cabinet, you remove the beer or whatever, you're less likely to go and get it. So just like we talked about gutting the pantry of bad foods, gut your house of alcohol. If it's not in arm's distance and you have to like literally leave your home to go and get it, you're less likely to go and get it because it takes energy, right? You've got to go and move. So remove it from your home. If you are going to keep alcohol in your home, um, stick the bottle of wine at the back of the fridge on the top shelf and put some food in front of it so you don't see it. Or if you really want to keep alcohol in your house for special occasions, maybe you entertain or whatever, put the alcohol again out of sight. Put it in your garage if you have a garage or put it in a weird spot like underneath, under your bed or in the clothes closet. Anywhere where you actually have to go and like make a concerted effort to go and retrieve it. The problem is, is if you leave it in your kitchen or you leave it on a liquor cabinet in the living room or it's there in sight, because you see it, you're more likely to go over and, re and, and grab it, right? So uh, just remove it out of sight. The other thing is um, if you drive a certain way to and from work or home and you go past a liquor store, remove the visual side of the liquor store. Take a different route. Um, another way to reduce alcohol is to start spending a lot more time with people who don't drink as much alcohol or don't drink at all, uh, which is cool, which is good, which is a great way of doing it. Um, uh, some other tips here. Figure out what it's actually costing you. Like, do the math. I would encourage you to like sit down and just go, right, how much money did I spend on alcohol this week? And then multiply it by four, which gives you a month, and then multiply it by 12, which gives you a year. So definitely, what is it costing you to drink alcohol? Now, let's just say as a hypothetical here that you spend $50 per week on alcohol, okay? That's buying it out in drinks or in a restaurant bill or buying some wine or a six pack of beer, or whatever, just to say it's $50 a week. So that's $50 a week times four is $200 a month. Okay, not that huge of amount in this example, right? But then, Add up then what you're actually spending when you drink the alcohol. Like for example, are you having a late night burger or are you having uh, an extra dessert or are you buying more food or are you, are you actually spending money on a taxi or Uber because you're drinking? So add up that cost, right? So let's just say that might be another $25 a week. So we're looking at another $100 a month. So now we're up to $300 per month. Then figure out how many days of the year, or sorry, how many days of the week or the month where because you're, you're hung over or you're a little bit irritable that you have a hangover breakfast or you go out for breakfast instead of eating in and you get something just to make yourself feel a little bit better. Maybe that's another $25 a week. So now we're up to another $100. So now we're up to $400 a month. And then maybe what do you spend per month on you know, going to the pharmacy and getting cold and flu tablets or vitamin C or something because you feel run down because you've been drinking. Maybe that's another, I don't know, 25 bucks a week. I don't know if this is too much or too little in your scenario, but this is just an example, right? I encourage you to do the math uh, as it relates to you. So now we're up to $500 per month. What about if you, uh, because you're a little bit cranky and irritable in the morning because you've been drinking alcohol, you're not making as much money in your business or you're not being as productive as you can be in your job, which means you're missing out on a promotion because your boss or your manager or whoever doesn't think you're doing a very good job because you're like tired and whatever. So maybe that's costing you missed opportunities. Maybe it's $100, another $100 a month on average. So now we're up to $600 a month that it's actually costing you even though you've only spent $200 a month on the actual alcohol. Does this make sense? So, uh, and even women, like what do you spend on moisturizers? Like moisture, like all those moisturizers, fancy moisturizers you put on, they're expensive. But guess what? You don't even need those moisturizers if you quit or reduce alcohol because alcohol dehydrates you. If you want to have really beautiful, luscious skin, just quit drinking because as soon as you do, the poison leaves your skin and it makes your skin glow. You don't even need any of those moisturizers. So add up what you spend on moisturizers every month 
and then add that to how, how much alcohol is costing you. So there's all these little hidden things here. The other thing is, let's just say that the alcohol is making you depressed because it is a depressant, right? Um, even if it just makes you a little bit depressed, just a little bit. Because you're a little bit depressed, now you're not as energetic, now you're less likely to go to the gym, now you're not as happy, and because you're not as happy, you're kind of walking around like this the whole time, and because you're walking around like this the whole time, maybe if you're single, nobody wants to date you, or you don't have the confidence to go and approach someone because you're kind of like walking around like this the whole time, just because you have, just have this general feeling of mediocrity or an averageness. Averageness is not a word, average, feeling average. So now that's costing you your happiness and the happiness is costing you maybe a hundred bucks a month. So can you see how alcohol, even though it's just one or two seemingly innocent drinks per week or night or whatever, the drink to relieve your stress at the end of the day, can you see how it, it can actually be costing you a lot more than just what you spend on alcohol? So I would encourage you to do the math, okay, and then figure out what it is, that, what it's, what's it costing you. Uh, second little tip here on alcohol is if you want to go out and not drink, then say to yourself, I only drink water tonight. I only drink water tonight or I only drink soda water. My favorite drink is water, ice and a piece of lime, but it can be soda water with a splash of cranberry, whatever it is. Um, don't say to yourself, oh, I'm not going to drink tonight, I'm not going to drink alcohol. Just say, I only drink water, or I only drink soda because the mind really wants to focus on what it uh, can do. If you tell it what not to do, then what happens? You obsess about what not to do and then because you're obsessing about what not to do, you, you tend to think about that thing and then you're more inclined to be tempted to actually drink it. So don't say I won't drink alcohol tonight, say I will drink water or I will drink soda, water and ice, a piece of lime. Whenever anyone asks you if you want a drink, say hey you want a drink? Say yes please, I'll take a water, ice and a piece of lime. Or yeah, just a glass of water, thanks. Or yeah, soda water or whatever. Whatever your stock drink is, whenever a waiter or a friend or anyone asks you if, what do you want to drink, just tell them that stock answer. Uh, if you're going out to a bar, I like to like just walk into the bar and just go straight up and order a non-alcoholic drink. Because I like to like just get into the habit of like, yeah, walk up to the bar, get a yeah, water, ice, piece of lime, thanks. Guess what it costs you? It costs you zero and you drink it all night and you feel amazing. It refreshes you, skin looks good. Uh, number three is, I'm not sure this is picking up on the thing, but uh, have the most fun. Let me just see if I can. Have the most fun. That means like when you're going out or you're socializing, whether it's a dinner or you're going to a bar or whatever, just commit to having the most fun. You don't need to be thinking, oh, I'm not drinking, I'm gonna be so dull and boring tonight. You need, just be thinking, I'm going to have the most fun tonight. I'm going to introduce people. I'm going to be genuinely interested in the other person uh, that I'm talking to. I'm going to be engaging. People think that because you stop drinking or you reduce drinking that all of a sudden you're like a social leper. No. I jump up and down. I'm friendly. I'm personable. I introduce people. I commit to having the most fun when I'm out socializing with friends and I don't drink alcohol. Zero. Nothing. Sometimes people actually think I'm drunk because I'm having such a good time. They go, oh wow, you were drunk last night. So yeah, well, that's interesting. Sometimes I'll just won't even tell them or other times they'll say, yeah, I wasn't even drinking. They go, yes you were. It's like, no, I don't drink. I quit drinking. They're like, what? I'm like, yeah, I quit drinking. People don't even, can't even believe it sometimes. Um, what's another habit here? When friends of yours uh, give you a hard time about it or try to encourage you to drink, just laugh it off, just like, ah, oh, I'm too strong in mind. I'm too strong, too strong. And when you do that, nobody really cares. When you say like, um, oh, I'm gonna get drunk on this water tonight. I'm gonna get wasted. Yes, I'm gonna swing from the rafters and make a little joke of it. Nobody can really give you a hard time. Nobody really cares as much as you think that they care. The main thing is um, get it out of your house or your home, uh, make it difficult to get to, so don't go past the liquor store. Um, figure out what it's actually costing you, do the math in your head in terms of the finances, and then what's it costing you with your health? Uh, say to yourself, I only drink water tonight, I only drink soda water. Um, commit to having the most fun. Uh, laugh it off when people are like, go on, have a drink. You know, just be, just be chill, chill about it, laugh about it. Uh, 
And if you do those things and you practice those things, and then you, you, know, you, you get into that habit of, um, oh yeah, one more thing as well. If you're stressed out and drinking is, relieves your stress, here's another little habit or some habits that you can do to relieve you of your stress. It's go for a walk around the block, it's breathe in, breathe out, have a tall glass of uh, ice cold water or make yourself a nice smoothie, healthy smoothie. If your nightly habit is to sit down and have a glass of wine or beer with a meal and watch TV, then just change the habit of pouring an, um, an, ice, cl- uh, an ice glass of uh, water, ice, piece of lime, a healthy juice, or change your routine and go and like phone a friend or walk around the block or do some push-ups, jump up and down, because you don't actually want the drink to relieve your stress. You actually just want to relieve your stress. And you can l- relieve your stress many ways, right? So instead of you going, oh, I just need a drink just to, just to relax, just to chill out. Just say, oh, I just need to relax and chill out. I'm gonna jump up and down, I'm gonna breathe, I'm gonna stretch, I'm gonna walk around the block, I'm gonna just change my state. Because I, I just wanna make sure I reinforce this point that you don't want the alcohol to relieve you of your stress, you just want to relieve yourself of your stress. And you can do that many ways. So just understand that and create new habits and experiment with them. I've given you a few little habits there, but experiment, see what works for you. Um, I'll just leave you with this, with this thought. Um, since I quit drinking in 2010, I've lost almost 40 pounds. I look better, I feel better, I sleep better. My relationships have improved. My romantic relationships have improved. Uh, I landed my dream job hosting Sports Center on ESPN because I had clarity and focus. Right? Because I wasn't drinking, I had clarity and focus. I finally got my dream job. Uh, I started uh, businesses, three businesses now. Uh, life is just good. It's just good. Uh, and I know it's hard because there's this pressure to, to like drink. It's part of our culture. It's like, oh, you drink champagne when you celebrate. Well, who says you have to drink champagne when you celebrate? And we drink beer when we watch the football on a Sunday. Well, who says you can't watch the football without drinking beer? I go to the pub and I watch the football and have a good time and I drink water or soda water. So I know it's, a, it's, a, it's ingrained in our culture to just that drinking is just normal and natural, but it's a poison. You're putting poison in, in your body. And so you can have fun. You can do all these amazing things. You can have a romantic dinner over candlelight without the bottle of wine. I know you can because I've been doing it since 2010 and it's awesome. Uh, And right now, go ahead and leave a comment down below. What is your relationship like with alcohol? What are you gonna try now? What has worked, what hasn't worked? And uh, share your experience around that. Ask other people, hey, what habits have worked for you to reduce alcohol? Get the conversation going. And I'll see you on the next one.